What is going on everybody? In today's video, I am bringing you something that is somewhat of a controversial topic. Some of the old school community believes that third party clients are overpowered and should not be allowed, while some of the community believes that it's taking away something that Jagex doesn't really have the time to do. You have these developers that are making a third party client to give us a lot of quality of life updates that in my opinion should be included in the vanilla client, but Jagex is using the time to work on different things or better content for us. Meanwhile, somebody like Adam from RuneLight is developing this client with plugins that can help us out as players. So where do I stand on this? Well, I am on the side where I believe third party clients are absolutely okay as long as the plugins aren't too overpowered. Not too long ago, there was an issue with the third party client OS buddy that had some incredibly overpowered plugins that Jagex quickly got to and said this cannot keep going on. Now luckily, everything that I'm bringing you in this video today has been okayed by Jagex. The RuneLight team was able to get Jagex to pretty much say, hey, everything in your client is okay. So for the past couple of months and up until the point of this video, any plugins that are available in the actual RuneLight client are perfectly okay to use and have been okayed by Jagex. Now, I will say this, after watching this video and seeing some of these plugins, if you don't have the RuneLight client, do not download the wrong link to the RuneLight client. There are many fake websites out there which will claim that they're installing RuneLight, but what they're actually installing is malware, which will keylog you. It can take your password, your bank pins, it can get into all of your RuneScape account information and possibly more, even your personal data. So if you are interested in downloading the real RuneLite client, you can check the description below this video, which has a link to my Discord. And from there, you can check out the helpful OSRS sites page in my Discord, which has the actual RuneLite link. It is www.runelight.net. Anything other than that website listed there is fake and can get you in a lot of trouble with your RuneScape account data and anything else on your computer. Now, what is this video actually about? This video is going to be me showing you guys all of the most important plugins that RuneLight offers, in my opinion. The reason I chose to do this video is because a lot of people tend to ask me while I'm streaming, what plugin is that? What client are you using? Or they comment on my videos as well and ask the same question. So I decided that I'm actually just going to go through and show you every single plugin that I actually use and I think is very beneficial to the game. And pretty much all of these I think should be included with the vanilla client at some point in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. Aside from the first one, I'm gonna go in alphabetical order all the way down the list of what I think should be included in your RuneLight setup because I think it's very beneficial. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the RuneLight setting. This is the first plugin or setting options rather that I will talk about and it's going to be the base RuneLight settings. In this options menu, you can control everything directly related to RuneLight and the game client itself. You can control the game size, the client position, tray notifications, and when notifications are sent. Before getting into any of the other settings, I'm going to mention that in this video, I suggest you come here first and get everything set up how you'd like it after you install the RuneLight client. Okay, so getting into the actual plugins, I'm going to try to keep these as short and sweet as possible and just give you a basic description. If you download the client, you can go in and see exactly what all they do. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. Let's go. Agility shows where shortcuts are and where to click for training agility courses. It makes it a lot easier to see where you're going and keep track of that. Attack styles. This is particularly good for peers. You'll always know what type of attack you're using so you don't accidentally get level 2 defense and ruin your account. You can also check the boxes in this option to warn you if you're accidentally using the wrong attack style. Bank. The bank plugin is nice as it will show you grand exchange prices as well as high alchemy prices by just hovering over an item. You can also toggle the option to show your exact bank value just in case you're curious at how much your twisted bow tanked in price overnight. 
Bank tags. This one is a particular favorite of mine. It allows you to tag items in your bank and add tags to them. For example, in my bank, I have extra tabs made for the Chambers of Zarek, Theater of Blood, Zalra, and the Inferno. This saves a lot of time when searching for my items to gear up. Boost information. Boost information shows you how much time you have remaining on your boosted stats. You can also set an option to display the debuff timer, which will then show you when your lowered stats will restore again. Boss timers. This one's pretty self-explanatory, but incredibly useful when bossing. You won't have to guess when the boss is going to respawn. Runelight conveniently gives you a nice little timer to let you know how much time you have to prepare for the next kill. Camera. This one is a niche plugin for those who want a little bit more out of the RuneScape camera. You can expand the zoom limit to see more or turn on the vertical camera which will allow you a complete bird's eye view of the game and if you prefer it, you can also remap default camera buttons to other buttons on the mouse. Cannon. This one is nice for Slayer. The Cannon plugin will show you the best spots to place your cannon as well as display your available ammunition left. No more forgetting, you just added cannonballs and throwing two more in there. Chambers of Zarek. The Cox plugin has a ton of useful perks. This one will display your elapsed raid time, show the points in the chat box once the raid is completed, give you a scouting overlay which you can leave on during the raid so that you know what's coming next, and it also allows you to blacklist and whitelist rooms for faster scouting. You can also turn on the exclamation mark layout command which will show your team the layout of the raid once you've scouted it. Chat commands can be incredibly useful. You can show prices, levels, clues, kill counts, personal bests, duels, and more. Anyone else using Runelight will also be able to see the messages when you send one of these commands. You can hover over the options to see what the command syntax is. Clue Scroll. The Clue Scroll plugin helps you figure out your clues much faster. Although some people do like to figure these out for themselves, I prefer to be lazy and just use the Runelight function rather than heading over to the wiki to find the answers. Cooking. The cooking option will show you how much food you've burned and successfully cooked and also give you a percentage rate. It's pretty nice but can also be tilting at lower levels like come on why have I burned 24 out of my 28 lobsters. Daily Task Indicator. This plugin will let you know about all the daily tasks you're normally too lazy to remember and definitely too lazy to get. If this is enabled you'll get messages in your chat box telling you what you should be collecting upon login. Death Indicator. The Death Indicator will let you know exactly where you have died and on what world. This plugin is a godsend for me because I die regularly. AFKing too hard is a way of life. Default World. With this plugin, you can set Runelight to load a particular world when the client is launched. I particularly like to hang out in World 386. Diary Requirements. Instead of going over to the wiki to look up what level you need to make that adamant plate body for the drainer diaries, this plugin will tell you right in the achievement diary what skill and what level you need to know life. Emojis. Although not really that important, it is cool to see the colon parentheses smiley face turn into an actual emoji. You can enable this to see a lot of different emojis. Entity Hider. With this plugin, you can hide certain things in the game such as other players, friends, clanmates, and more. A quick example of where this is particularly useful is at Wintertot. You can hide other players and keep an eye on your HP bar rather than trying to find it through the sea of rapidly declining AFK or HP bars. Examine. I really like this plugin because it sends examine information to the API. If you'd like to quickly know how much something is worth, you can simply examine it and Runelight will return the current actively traded price to your chat box. FPS controller. Enabling this plugin will allow you to control your target FPS in RuneScape, so when your old toaster of a laptop can't quite handle running OSRS at its best, you can set the FPS limiter lower to use less resources. You can also turn on the Draw FPS indicator to show your current FPS in the top right of the gameplay window. Fairy Rings. Having this one turned on is incredibly convenient. The plugin saves all of the fairy rings that you have traveled to. You can then search through them by just typing something to do with it, such as the location it's near or the code itself. Fishing. This one is also pretty self-explanatory. The plugin will show you a lot of information about fishing spots, such as spot tiles, spot icons, trawler activity, and minnow movement. There are also some additional features you can configure for your own convenience. GPU. Assuming you have a standalone graphics card, you can enable this option to force Runelight to run off the graphics card rather than your processor. So if you splurge on a nice RTX 2080 but still have that second gen i3 brick, Runelight should run a lot better if this option is enabled. 
Grand Exchange. This plugin shows some incredibly useful information about the Grand Exchange. It can give you notifications when something you're selling eventually sells. It can enable the OS Buddy actively traded prices and show you what the item count limits are for buying certain items. Ground items. With this plugin, ground items will be displayed as an overlay. You can toggle many options with this. You can have it show the item name, its GE price, and its high alchemy value if you like. You can also add items to a hidden items list by holding the alt key and clicking the minus sign that pops up next to the item. Additionally, you can add items to highlighted items to make sure that you see them. Even better than that, you can change the colors of items with a certain value so when you see a line of pink text you can get super excited before you even know what you got. There are many different options with this plugin, so explore it at your leisure. Ground Markers The Ground Markers plugin allows you to mark certain tiles by holding the shift key, right clicking, and selecting mark tile. This is very helpful in PVM situations where you need to stand somewhere specific. You can also select the remember color per tile option, then change the color to make mark tiles more identifiable if you're doing something complicated like the Inferno. Short disclaimer here. Manually marking tiles is not against the rules. Only tiles automatically marked by a client to show certain things like where NPC attacks will land is bannable. Runelight does not have an automatic tile marking feature anymore, so rest easy, you will not get banned for this plugin. High scores. Want to know why that guy's out DPSing you after he crashed you at Bandos? If you have this plugin enabled, it will add a look up option to players when you right click them, instantly pulling up their high scores. There are some other options in here you can also explore. Hunter. With this plugin, you'll get helpful information based on the state of your boxes, which you can obviously customize. The color on the trap will indicate which state it's in. It is very useful for hunting salamanders and chinchampas. Idle Notifier. This was one of my most favorite plugins while I was on the maxing grind. The Idle Notifier sends a Windows notification once you've stopped doing something. If you're woodcutting and the tree goes down, you're probably going to be way too entranced with a Netflix show you've been binging on, so Runelight will conveniently give you a nice little ding to let you know that you need to mindlessly click on another tree while trying to figure out what is going on in the upside down. Implings. This plugin will highlight implings trying to sneak by you while you're running somewhere. You can set each impling to whichever color you desire or just use the default settings. Instance map. This will allow you to see exactly what an instance area looks like. Some instances in OSRS don't have their own map. If you enable this, you can right click the world map icon and select show instance map. Interface styles. Interface Styles allows you to get a bit more of an updated look to your OSRS HUD if you'd like it, or if you're super old school, you can even set it back to the 2005 interface style. You can also switch over to high detail health bars if that's your thing, but we might make fun of you for that. Inventory Tags. This plugin is particularly useful for PVM. It will give you the ability to tag items in your inventory with a certain color. By right clicking on the inventory button and clicking configure inventory tags, you can then right click items in your inventory and assign them to a group. An example would be assigning red to melee weapons and armor, green for ranging items, and blue to magic items. When learning to PVM with gear switches, this makes identifying switches quick and easy. Item Charges. The Item Charges plugin is very simple. This plugin will show you remaining charges on things such as jewelry, water skins, bellows, and more. Item Prices. If this is enabled, this plugin works with the bank plugin I mentioned earlier. You'll have to have this enabled to get the item hover feature where it shows you your GE and alchemy values of items. Kingdom of Miscellanea. With this enabled, you won't have to keep chatting with one of the nearby residents to check your favor. A simple overlay will display it at all times while in Miscellanea. Karend Library. This plugin eliminates certain areas when finding certain books, making it so finding the one you need is much quicker and faster. Personally, I would rather not search every dusty bookshelf when trying to find a good story. Loot Tracker. With the Loot Tracker enabled, Runelight will capture everything an NPC drops and add it to the tracker. If you're wondering how many Abyssal Whips you didn't get after your Slayer task, you can open up the tracker and check out what your total loot was. This plugin does get a bit buggy when bursting, barraging, or chinning. When a multiple monsters die at the same time, the tracker doesn't always pick up every kill. Low Detail Back to your machine with the Gen 2 i3 in it, if you decided not to splurge on that RTX 2080, this one could be useful for you. The low detail mode turns off ground decorations and certain textures within the game to help it run more smoothly on your Commodore 64. Neat, huh? Menu Entry Swapper. This one swaps a ton of menu items throughout the game, giving us a huge quality of life convenience. Now there are a lot of options you can go through when you'd like to do so, so I'll just name a few of the more useful ones. 
Assignment is a good one to have on, so you can just left click a Slayer Master to get a new task. Bank is also a good one, so you can just left click a Bank Booth to bank. And another good one is the Reset one. This swaps the check and reset options on box traps, making it so you only have to left click a box trap to retrieve the Chin Champa and set up a new trap. I got asked about this a lot when I was streaming my Run to 99 Hunter, so there you go. Go through these whenever you can because there are a lot more options in here which can be really helpful and help out your ease of playing. Mining, this plugin gives a lot of helpful information about mining like when certain ores are going to be available, where they are, and respawn timers for when they'll be back. Motherload Mine, working alongside the mining plugin, this one will keep track of how much pay dirt you've mined at the Motherload Mine. It will also give you cool stats such as pay dirt per hour and how much of each ore you've claimed while cleaning off all of those dirty rocks. NPC Aggression Timer, this plugin will let you know when a particular monster's aggression has stopped and where its aggressive area starts and stops. So for the AFKers out there, this one is a must have to make sure you get the maximum amount of Netflix in and the minimal amount of clicking. NPC Indicators, with this plugin you're able to tag NPCs to see where they are. You can set it to highlight their hull, the tiles they take up, or the southwest tile which is where line of sight attacks are generated from. There's also a convenient show respawn timer option to show you how long you've got before you have to steal back that brutal black dragon kill from the guy in the rune crossbow and monk's robes. Nightmare zone, if you plan on getting some good AFKing in at the nightmare zone, make sure this one is turned on. This will let you know when and where the buffs show up and can give you notifications about expiring potions. They just want to help make your 26k last longer than 15 minutes this time. Opponent information. This plugin will give you information on what NPC you're fighting. A quick view HP bar can be seen in the top left of the screen. Player indicators. Although useful in some situations, this one isn't too needed, but still a nice convenience, especially for PvP. This plugin will allow the Runelight client to show your friends and clan members, as well as non clan members, making them more easily identifiable in that 100 man war you're leading from Mom's basement. Player owned house. Although you should know where everything in your house is, this plugin will draw icons on the minimap to show what and where everything is, as such as altars, teleports, and more. There's also a handy tool that shows you how much time is left on your lit burners, because everyone knows if the burners are lit, the hosters get more tips. Poison. This one tracks the current damage values for poison and venom. It will let you know how much the next damage will hit for and how long until the poison runs out. You can see it by hovering over the HP orb on the minimap when you are poisoned or venomed. Prayer. This one displays helpful information on prayer and can even give you a visual prayer flick indicator. The flick indicator helps you time your prayer flicks to game ticks so you use minimal amounts of prayer. Puzzle Solver. The Puzzle Solver is extremely helpful with clue scrolls. It will take those annoying puzzle boxes down from 5 minutes to about 30 seconds. Some may look down upon this, but hey, most everyone goes over to the wiki to see the finished puzzle anyways. Regeneration Meter. This plugin is very simple. All it does is track the regeneration of hit points and special attack to let you know when more will be available. Report Button. Enabling this will allow you to replace the Report Player on the Report Button with the Date, Login Timer, UTC Time, Jagex HQ Time, or Local Time. I personally have it on the Login Timer, so I know when I start getting close to being nerd logged. And if you don't know what a nerd log is, wait until the timer hits 6 hours, you'll see. Rogue's Den. Turn this one on if you will be traversing the Rogue's Den. The plugin will mark tiles and click boxes for easier running through. This is not against the rules because it's only showing you where to click to make sure you get to where you're going. Rune Pouch. This will conveniently show you the contents of your Rune Pouch so when you are maging you can remember what you have in there and if you're going to run out soon. Runecraft. This one is good for the Abyss. It will draw boxes on the screens to show you where each rift is for each altar. You can come in here and turn the ones off that you do not want to see. Screen Markers. This one is useful for things like skilling. As for a quick example, I'll be using smithing. Say you're smithing at the Varrock West Bank, but keep misclicking the anvil after banking. If you turn on the screen markers, you can draw boxes around things that you need to click on. Make sure you always move your mouse to where it actually needs to go. Screenshot. Many useful options for screenshotting are in this plugin. You can have Runelight set to automatically take screenshots of things like rewards, levels, drops, and even your friend's deaths. Pretty good roasting material if you ask me. Skill Calculator. This plugin will enable all of the skill calculators in the tab that is added to the panel. You can figure out how much of what you need to buy for 99 crafting and then get depressed because you realize you can't even afford it anyways. 
Slayer. Although this does show relevant information for Slayer and the current task you're on, I honestly liked it the most because it gives you a nice little ding when a superior Slayer monster shows up. At least you'll never miss another chance for an imbued heart. Status Bars. People always ask me about this one. The Status Bars plugin will show you your current HP and prayer and the pillars on the inventory heads up display. You can enter the menu further to change some things around if you like. Stretched Mode. This will stretch the game in both fixed and resizable modes to give a better experience while playing RuneScape in the year 2020 and beyond. My favorite part about this plugin is the resizable scaling option. Changing this percentage value will increase the size of all HUD items, which are the chat, inventory panel, and the minimap. No more playing RuneScape on a Game Boy screen. Tile Indicators. The Tile Indicators is very useful when you need to know where you're moving to. With this option turned on, you can check the Highlight Hovered Tile option to see where you will be moving to. If you also have the Highlight Destination Tile option turned on, the box will also be highlighted when it's clicked. Timers. This plugin gives you information on different things with timers such as the Abyssal Sire Stun Timer, Divine Potion Timers, Overload Timers, Teleblock Timers, and much more. Go through these options to see which ones you'd like and which ones you don't need. Woodcutting. This one is nice to have if you're AFKing to 99 woodcutting. You'll be able to receive bird's nest notifications, your whole session stats such as logs chopped and logs per hour, and it will even show you when trees respawn. World Hopper. Although OSRS does have its own World Hopper built in, Runelight is a little bit better as it shows you the current ping for every world that is online, making it much easier to choose one of the best ones for you. World Map. This plugin adds a ton of helpful information to the world map. One example of this is Fairy Ring codes. You can pull up the map, hover over the Runelight Fairy Ring icon on it, and it will give you the code. There are many more options in here, so I suggest checking them out when you get a chance. XP drops, globes, and trackers. All of these options have everything to do with controlling anything experience related. You can choose many different options from what colors you want your XP drops or globes to be, all the way to experience trackers on the side panel. Go through these and set it up exactly how you'd like it. So that is all of the plugins that I think you all should be using. These are all the plugins that I really depend on and I don't think there's anything wrong with these plugins. I think pretty much all of these are basic quality of life client updates that Jagex probably should have taken under a long time ago, but luckily we have the guys over at RuneLight to develop something like this and send it out to the players. Honestly, kudos to them for making something like this just for a better RuneScape experience. I do enjoy the client. I was actually an OS Buddy user at one point, and I switched over to RuneLight about a year ago. So um, I haven't been in contact with the RuneLight people. I'm purely making this video just to explain all of the plugins. Like I said earlier, I get a lot of questions. Why are you using this plugin? Where do I get it? How do I do it? So I thought the video would be good uh, just to explain. So. Maybe I get uh, that question not asked to me a hundred times a day anymore. So if you liked the video and it helped you out, I hope that you will leave a thumbs up down below. They really do help the video's popularity. And if you haven't done so yet, you can tap the subscribe button. It is in the bottom right corner under the video or on the end screen. Make sure you tap the little bell icon too. It will let you know when I go live or when I upload a new video. And if you have your ad blocker enabled, you could consider joining the channel as a channel member. You will get access to special community posts for only channel members and events with me on the side. So maybe you can consider doing that because it will help me bring all kinds of new and interesting content to you. So with that, guys, I will see you all on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.